In this tutorial, we're going to go through how to uh, install System Reporter 3.1 Update 1 on Linux. Uh, the supported version of Linux is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5 and 6. I'm using CentOS, which uh, is a uh, community driven and supported uh, version of Red Hat. Um, I'm also running this uh, as a GUI just to, because I got to load the web browser and some other stuff, but uh, most of the commands that we're going to be running are on, on the uh, command line anyway. All right, so um, the databases that are supported under Linux are uh, SQLite, which please don't use it unless it's a, uh, a lab environment or a demo. Uh, also, MySQL is supported, um, and uh, Oracle is supported. If MySQL is 5.1 and 5.5, those are the two versions that are supported, and then 11G for Oracle. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to use MySQL and... Um, uh, I'll grab the latest 5.5 client. So uh, when we go to get started, what I'm going to do here is uh, two things. I'm going to browse through the CD and show you uh, something very important, actually. Uh, this SR, or System Reporter Sizing XLS file, and of course the user guide. So it's uh, on the CD under Documents. Okay, the, the system reporter sizing document is crucial for you to size the physical resources of your system reporter for your particular environment. System reporter can actually monitor and pull multiple three-par arrays, so you have to ensure that if you're even building that environment, that you're building it specific for your, for your individual needs. Okay, they're going to be a little different. Obviously, this is a lab system, so I can have anything. Uh, the physical requirements, um, if you have a physical server, I should say, uh, you can kind of get away with having the database and system reporter all running on the same box. They do highly recommend that if you're going to run this in a virtual machine that the database is separate from the uh, SQL server or from the uh, sorry from the system reporter instance. Uh, also in the C under the CD under Linux is the Linux CLI, 3 part CLI. We'll be installing that as well. And then here are the Red Hat 5 versions and then Red Hat 6 versions under there. Okay. So let's get started with that. Uh, what I typically do, because the scripts are um, uh, reference MySQL server <clears throat> as a host name, I'll actually go into the host file and uh, wherever my IP address is for my host, I'll just tag that MySQL server. You don't have to do that. You can just edit the files later and, and put in the uh, valid host name if you want. I just like to do things a little simply. All right, so now I'm going to disable SE Linux. All right, and we will install GD, and I need to install the 32-bit version, so it should reference that right here. So yes, yes. I haven't even installed any patches on this thing yet. Okay, I'm gonna make this window a little bit bigger. All right, um, so let's go into uh, the the HTTP directory and the comp. I got to make an edit to this HTTP to timeout. And we're going to change that from 120 to 360. And then I need, I need to make sure that it's going to start on a reboot. Okay, so now it will. And I can, well, I can leave it off for now. It's not a big deal. Okay, so let's go download MySQL Server. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you set through the whole download process. I'm just going to show you that I'm, which one I'm grabbing. <clears throat> so, 5.5. Five. This one, and we'll just grab the bundle, save it to a file, it's my root directory. Okay, I'll pause this, and when it's done, I'll restart. 
Okay, so my download has completed. I'll close that, close that. <clears throat> Go to root, extract that. My SQL file. All right, I'm gonna install the MySQL client, uh, MySQL development, MySQL server. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, edit my.cnf. I'm going to put in my SQL max allowed packet equals 32 meg. And then I'm going to start it. Run this secure installation. Copy, paste. Set the root password. Yes. Uh, remove anonymous users. No logins remotely for root. And I get rid of the test database and reload the tables. Okay, now we're done with that. I'm going to log into MySQL. I'm going to create database insert stats. I'm going to create um, two users, user CLI, user identified by password one, two, three. Create user web user. Use database answer stats. Okay. Oh, oops. Sorry about that. All right. So now I'm actually in the insert stats database, so I can go ahead and assign permissions. Grant all on star. So everything, all rights to CLI user because it manages the database. Grant select on star to web user because it queries the database for the web browser. Okay, exit. I'm going to restart that. Actually, uh, a couple more things I need to do. I need to make the directory bar run mysql d, and then I have to link the sock file because it, it moved. So, link. Bar lib mysql mysql sock yeah to bar run mysql I think that's right oop fingers were off so bar live mysql my bar run mysql d d no d yep okay um so i think that that's it for mysql so let me start that again we'll check errors later Now we need to create a password file for the um, sample loop. Uh, database password file. Database sample loop. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then it's going to be the two users we created in the database and their passwords. Okay, so let's go to the CD-ROM and we'll install the CLI first.
I'm just going to accept all the defaults when they prompt you. Yes, yes. Yes. Enter to exit the installer. Okay. Now I need to install the sample loop and the web server adapter. Okay. Now I want to make sure that sample loop starts. You'll notice it's in the inet D. Right there. Whoops. And it's right here. And we want to make sure it's on multi user mode. Okay. So now we have to edit the files for that for that. So we go to um, uh, www directory, go into the CGI, CGI bin directory, <clears throat> and we're going to edit the tickler file in each one of these. And I have no idea why this still says 231. Okay, so I'm not even sure if this really matters anymore because it seems like all the installations still have that, but I'm going to set it to what the real CLI is. Okay, and here's where it says the the host, and that's where I put it in the in the host file of MySQL Server. If you remember that, here's our database in ServSats, and here's the CLI user in it and in its password. So I'm updating the password. Okay, and then we edit the other one. And same thing. Alright, and then here's my MySQL server for the database host. And in service that's the database. And why I'm pointing this out is because if you change the database name um, you're, or the, the host name, you need to make sure you edit this in the file. Alright, and here's the web user and web user password. And then if you had, if you were setting this up to do uh, SMTP reports, which I'm not, you'd put your mail host and that kind of information in right there. Okay. So now we should be able to, let me think, is there anything else I'm forgetting? I got those edited. I got the file done. All right. I should be able to start. Did I start HTTP? Okay. Start my SQL again. Okay. I should be able to start the sample loop service. Got my fingers crossed here. I don't think I forgot anything. Oh, okay, good. So that should be it. Now, if I go to my web browser. And if everything worked out okay, when I go to this directory, it should log me right into, voila, there it is, 3.1 MU1. And then I would go to policy settings and insert systems and add my inserve. Well, there you go. It's been less than 15 minutes, and we got System Reporter up and running. So good luck with your installation.